Hello, and welcome to an Albert S. Cook Library video, Evaluating Academic Sources in the Sciences. In this video, you will learn some criteria to consider and strategies for evaluating the quality of academic journal articles, conference papers, and other scholarly sources in STEM fields. Let's get started. First, let's consider why it is important to evaluate academic sources. It's usually pretty easy for me to convince students that they need to do some level of source evaluation for web sources, so things you might find with a basic Google search, because not everything that you find on the open internet is going to be a quality source. So that's usually pretty easy for everyone to understand. However, I find that sometimes when students are looking for scholarly articles, so academic journal articles, or maybe book chapters, or conference papers, I find that students aren't as likely to do a thorough analysis of these types of sources. And that may be, be because their professors have simply told them that they need peer-reviewed sources, so they kind of assume that because it's in an academic journal, it's a good source. Unfortunately, that's not an assumption that we can make because not every study that is published in an academic journal is high quality. While we do have safeguards in place to help prevent low quality things from being published, primarily the peer review process, that process can fail. So sometimes poor quality publications can make it through the cracks. So it is still important to consider each source with a critical eye. It's also important to evaluate academic sources to make sure that they are relevant to your research question or your research context. This is not always an easy determination to make because you may not find a lot of articles out there that are on your specific topic, so researchers that are doing exactly what you were doing. So it does require some critical thinking to really determine which type of research out there is going to relate to your study enough to be useful. So that's another consideration that's really important for you to make. And finally, you should evaluate academic sources to make sure that you're getting the best content out there. I would hope that you want to create the highest quality research that you possibly can. In order to do that, you want to make sure that you are citing the best outside studies that are out there. Now let's consider the criteria that you can keep in mind when evaluating academic sources. I like to separate these into two main categories. The first being who's responsible for the content, and the second would be the quality of the information itself. In that who's responsible category, you can consider the author of the work, the publisher of the work, and the funding organization if the research was funded by an outside group. In the content itself category, you should consider relevance to your own research, the currency of the information, the accuracy of the information, and the impact that that source had on the field. So is this a really important study? Let's consider each of these in a little bit more depth. First, we'll start with the who is responsible for the content category. When you're evaluating a scientific journal article or a book chapter or, or a similar scholarly source, you want to start by considering where that content came from. Is this a credible and reputable source? First, consider the author or authors of the work. What credentials do they have? You want to make sure that the primary authors or principal investigators of a study have extensive expertise in the field and are knowledgeable enough to be speaking intelligently about this topic area. This often means looking for authors that have a master's or a PhD in the field of research that they're doing or a really closely related field. It's not necessary for every single author on a study to have these credentials, however, because there are a lot of situations where a professor will do some research in the lab, but receive some assistance from graduate students or undergraduate students in some cases. And those students could be listed as authors on a study if they made some really significant contributions. 
those students might not have these advanced academic credentials yet. They might still be working on those degrees, but that's not a reason to reject an article. You just want to make sure that the primary authors have that level of expertise. You can also consider what previous publications an author has. If an author has published many different articles in that same topic area or a closely related field, that's another way that you can identify some expertise. Here again, it's not necessary for every author to have an extensive publication history, but it is definitely something that you can consider a positive if you find it. Every researcher does have to start somewhere. Even the most prolific ones did publish that first experiment or give that first conference presentation at one time or another. And it doesn't necessarily mean that something is poor quality because it's a researcher's first foray into scientific publication. So I wouldn't use that as a reason to immediately reject an article, but if you see that an author has a very extensive history, that's definitely something that you can consider to be a real positive. Finally, you can consider the reputation of an author. And the easiest way to do this is often with a simple Google search. You definitely don't need to do an extensive background check on each author or anything like that, but you do want to make sure that an author was not involved in any high profile controversy. If you see that an author was involved in an ethical scandal or maybe they were caught trying to publish plagiarized work, that would be a reason to try to find some research from a different source, since these things would definitely raise some red flags for you about the integrity of the research. Then you can consider the publisher. Oftentimes this would be an academic journal, sometimes it might be a book publisher as well. In this case, you can also consider reputation. So here you might do a Google search if you've never heard of a publisher before, see if there are any news stories, either good or bad, about that publisher to give you some idea. You can also consider their impact within the field. So is this a journal that is being cited by a lot of other researchers, or is it a fairly unpopular one where not a lot of people are using the research that's published there? Another very important consideration is what the peer review process looks like. So it's not enough just to make sure that a publication has a peer review process. You definitely want to stick to ones that do, but you should also consider how thorough their process is. The peer review process exists to prevent low quality research articles from being published, but if the peer review process is really short, the peer reviewers don't do a lot of in-depth research, or maybe some, there aren't safeguards against conflicts of interest or things like that, then just having that process alone isn't enough. So taking a moment to find a journal's homepage, see if you can find an About Us page or an Information for Authors or an Editorial Process page that gives you some information about peer review so you can make sure that they are going through a high quality process to help safeguard against poor quality research being published. You can also consider what a publisher's website looks like. A good quality academic journal is going to have a professional looking website. You want something that's easy to read and navigate. You shouldn't receive any 404 errors if you're just clicking on links on the page. You shouldn't see any obvious spelling or grammar, area, um, grammar errors or things like that. You want to make sure that they're putting forth a professional image. You can also consider a journal's scope. All academic journals are going to have a particular scope. Some might be fairly broad, some might be really specific. In either case, what you really want to make sure is that the article that you have in front of you matches the scope of that journal. For example, if you found an article about inorganic chemistry in a journal that is about psychology, and there isn't any obvious link between those two things, that would be a red flag because it might call you to question the journal's editorial process. 
then finally you can consider whether this is something that could be considered a predatory journal. There are some journals that exist primarily to make a profit as opposed to really just being out there to help disseminate quality scientific research. So these types of journals are often called predatory journals and they may have limited or no peer review process. Instead, what they're really trying to do is profit off of researchers that are desperate to publish. There is a lot of pressure for scientists to publish because it's often tied to their promotion and tenure requirements at their college or university. Because of that, there are some journals that require authors to pay a fee in order to publish. So if someone is having a hard time getting their research published in a high quality journal, they might turn to one that has these really low editorial standards just to have that publication on their CV. Now, I will note that there are some high quality publications out there that also require authors to pay a fee to publish. And that's because these are something called open access, where anyone is able to view the articles within this journal without any sort of a subscription. So they don't have to be affiliated with a library or buy their own journal subscription. In order for those open access journals to make a profit or even make enough money to continue to exist, then they have to shift the cost of publication from the subscriber, so the person who would normally be paying for that content, over to the individual researcher. So sometimes that cost is covered by a grant, sometimes a researcher's um, department at their university will cover it. But I do want to mention this because it's not always a bad thing if a publisher is requiring someone to pay, but there could be that you could come across a journal article from one of these predatory journals that are really just there to take advantage of people that are in this point of desperation. So definitely keep that in mind when you're determining whether or not a journal might be predatory. You can consider a lot of these same um, criteria as well. And next, you can consider who funded the research. Scientific publication is very expensive, so a lot of times research will be funded by outside organizations. So researchers might receive a grant from the National Institutes of Health, the National Science Foundation, or something like that. Or sometimes research is funded by a corporation. And that's something to keep in mind because it could be a potential source of bias. So if you notice that a study was funded by the company Monsanto, for example, and the research is looking at the effects of a product that Monsanto produces and distributes, then those researchers might feel some sort of pressure to find and report a certain result. So you want to keep that in mind because that could potentially hurt the integrity of the study. Now let's consider that second category of analysis, and that would be the quality of the content of the article. Not every published study is going to be high quality, so you really want to read things with a critical eye to make sure that they are really going to be studies that are worth citing. First, consider relevance to your own research. So above all, you want to make sure that you're finding articles that help you to answer your research questions. When you are searching for scientific literature, you are not always going to find articles that are an exact match for your topic. And that's actually a really good thing. If you find tons of articles where the researchers conducted an identical study to what you were doing in lab, that means that your study is not super impactful because it's been done a bunch of times before. So when you're looking for outside research, if you're doing a really novel study, you're going to have to think critically and be a little bit creative in order to determine what outside research is going to be related to your topic. So you'll have to exercise some personal judgment in order to determine which articles are going to help you to answer your research questions. It's often a good idea to start by reading the abstract of an article to get a quick first impression and to really consider the broader implications of your research. So even if someone isn't using the same experimental methods that you are or studying the same organism that you are in a biology lab, 
think about what you were ultimately trying to answer, go beyond those specific details, and think about what else is out there that relates. You also want to consider if a publication is the right type of article for your research. Sometimes you might need a primary research article, which is something that's reporting on the results of an original study. Sometimes it might be more useful for you to find a review article, which would be a summary of existing research on a particular topic area. So keep that in mind as well. You also want to consider whether an article has the appropriate scope for your research. This may depend on where you're at in the research process. If you're just getting started, you might want something that's fairly broad in focus. If you are trying to answer a more specific question, then you might want something that's more thorough and that goes into more detail. So those are things that you can consider as well. Then consider how current the information is. So when was that article published? There isn't any hard fast rule about how current your information needs to be in most contexts. The exception to that, of course, would be if a professor has asked you to find articles from the past five or 10 years, for example. But a lot of times it's going to be up to you to make that determination. In general, it's best to stick to the most current information that you can find. But the level of currency that you need is going to depend on your knowledge of the topic area. If you're studying a particular field that is rapidly evolving and you know that our knowledge is changing and has changed significantly in recent years, then you're probably going to want to stick to really current things. But if you're studying a field that does not have as much of a rapid development, then you might be okay using older sources. So a lot of this is going to come down to personal judgment. In general, I recommend evaluating all of your sources as a whole for currency. Sometimes it might be okay to have one or two older things if most of your sources are more current, but you do want to make sure that those older articles haven't been disproven. So if the older articles seem to make claims that contradict the more recent research, that would be a reason to for you to question them. Then you want to consider the accuracy of information in an article. So is that article really based on sound science? In this case, we do rely heavily upon the peer review process to safeguard against publications that contain inaccurate information. But as I've mentioned before, the peer review process can fail. So it's important for you to be considering all of these things when you're reading articles as well. And you can consider a lot of the same things that a peer reviewer should be keeping in mind too. So think about if the experimental methods seem appropriate to answer research questions. Think about if the data analysis methods being used are appropriate. Are the conclusions that the authors are drawing valid? So are they fully supported by previous research? Are they fully explained? And have they cited um, other relevant studies too? Or are they leaving out really foundational understandings of the field? So that's all really important for you to consider. You can also think about if the article is making similar claims to other studies, or if it is contradicting commonly held beliefs. It is definitely possible that you'll find an article that's contradicting other research and it's still accurate because theories do get disproven over time. So you do want to exercise your own best judgment here. If you're unsure about the quality of an article, please don't hesitate to get a second opinion. And you can do this in a lot of ways. You could ask a fellow student, you could ask one of your professors who's knowledgeable in that area, or you can ask me as your science librarian, and I'm always happy to give you my opinion too. Finally, you can consider the impact that an article has had on the field. When you're doing your own research, you want to make sure that you are citing other research that has been really influential in the field. Not every article that you cite needs to be something super well known, but you do want to make sure that you're pulling in relevant research that is highly regarded. To determine how impactful an article is, you can look at how many other articles out there have cited it. And there are two easy ways to do this. The first is with the database Scopus. 
If you find an article there and click on the title, you should see towards the right side of the screen a box that says metrics. That will list the number of citations that um, it has, so how many other articles have cited it, and it has something called a field weighted citation impact, which looks at this number of citations and compares it to other journals in the same field. So if you see a score there that is higher than one, that means it has been cited an above average number of times, so it has a fairly large impact. If it's less than one, so if it's a decimal, that means it has been cited less than the average article in that field. You can also find this information on Google Scholar. Underneath the description of that article that appears, there will be a link that says cited by and a number. So that's another way that you can see it as well. Note that impact, so the number of citations or the number of cited by articles that you see does depend on when something was published. If something was published yesterday, it probably isn't going to be cited by other articles, but it could still go on to have a real impact in the field. In contrast, if you find something that was published 10 years ago, but that only has like three other articles citing it, that might be a reason to find a different article because that tells you that that one didn't have a really big impact on the field overall. So definitely keep that in mind. If something is newer, it might not have a lot of citations, but if something is older and has very few, then it might not be the best article for you to use. Thank you for watching. If you have questions about this video or anything related to the research process, the Cook Library is happy to help. Visit bit.ly slash tu ask a librarian for details on how to contact a librarian through chat, email, text message, or individual appointment.